back everyone. We're about ready to wrap up chapter four, although I might make another video too. So we'll wait and see. So we're going to talk about applications, which is really what we're here about. And in particular, you might be interested in business applications. But if you learn some of these, how some of these applications work, you can translate that to business ones as well. Now let me check to make sure my pen is working. Looks good. All right. Exponential growth and decay are seen in a lot of different places, usually the sciences, but not exclusively. Usually we're talking about exponential growth or decay. Growth means it's getting bigger, decay means it's getting smaller, whatever it is that you're looking at. Here's a basic look to it. This is an exponential equation. Why, of course, like f of x, that's what we're interested in. And this y sub zero, the zero means at the very beginning of whatever time period we're talking about. So that would be the initial amount of something. It'll make more sense once we use an example or two. K is a constant. The K might be positive. It might be negative. And T, of course, is time in whatever unit you're using for this application. Your choice of time, whether it's seconds, minutes, or hours, will also affect the value of k. k will be different depending on which unit of time you use. Now, take a look. k determines what kind of function. Now, I'm going to just use k. If k is positive, we have growth. If k is negative, then we'll have decay or reduction in whatever quantity we're working with. We talked a bit about carbon dioxide earlier in the chapter, and we've got a function here, we hope, that relates the year with how much carbon dioxide parts per million. Now, how, how do we determine such a function from the data? Well, first of all, we're going to let x equals zero represent 1991. So over here, we could actually make another table. Instead of the years, you could, at the beginning, have zero for this. So here's x or t. This would be 10 years later. That would be 10. This would be 85 years later, this would be 185 years later, and this would be 285 years later. Remember, 1990 is the basis for all this. And of course, that will change what zero is. If you decide to use 1980, these numbers would be different, your equation would be different, but the results would be the same. Now remember, y sub zero or whatever it is sub zero represents the initial amount of something. In this case, y zero means the y value, the y value, the carbon dioxide for time zero, which is 1990. And that was 353 parts per million in 1990. So this gives you an ordered pair, 0, 353. And that's one of the ordered pairs you'd use to find that function that will maybe give you a way to approximate what things are going to be like carbon dioxide wise in the future. So how do we get a an exponential function that gives the amount of carbon dioxide. 
Well, let's see. Here's our data. Remember, we had our x values here. And the equation looks like this. This is the basic one. This is your y sub 0. And another way we could write the same thing, by the way, would be C, the amount of carbon, carbon dioxide. And we could write C sub 0, e k to the e to the kx. Same thing. Now, from the last pair of tables, we have 2275. What year is that? That's year 285 after 1990. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these values. Let's see, where's my cursor? Down here. Come on. My cursor decided to disappear. Try this. Okay. So here's our data down here. We're going to put that in our equation. And since we'll have everything except k, we can solve for k. Remember, this 2275 is 285 for x. And the y value is the 2000 parts per million of carbon dioxide. So here we go. We've got our data. And we're starting our function. Here's our starter function. This is our initial value. It always shows up there. This is some constant. And remember, I just said that will depend on what units you use for the time or the x. Our last set of data down here, we put in here. This is the number of years after 1990. And this is the concentration of carbon dioxide. Notice that the only thing missing is k. So we can solve this equation for k. That's why we've been practicing all these things. So first, divide both sides because we want to get to the k. And this simplifies things. Now, a smart thing to do is just leave this as 2,000 over 353. That way, it's an exact value. Now, remember how to do that? We're going to take the natural logarithm of both sides because the natural logarithm and e to a power are inverse operations. So natural logarithm of the left, natural logarithm of the right. Since these are inverses, we'll end up with 285k, the exponent. And over here, we'll just get a constant. We don't know what it is yet, but it's a constant. Now just imagine that this is a 7 or an 8 or something else. Don't freak out. So just focus on this. How would you find k? Divide by 285. So here's a representation. We could also write it like this. We could write the natural logarithm of 2000 over 353 divided by 285. Make sure you don't put the 285 there. No, don't do that. OK, we've got k. All we have to do is use the calculator. That's our k. Notice, for one thing, that the parts per million are going up, and our k is a positive value. That means it's growth. So here is our model. We found this k. We've got the entire model for us. So we could use this model to approximate what the carbon dioxide concentration was in maybe 2020 or 2040. All we'd have to do is get the right x. In this case for 2020, the x would be 30. And I could put the 30 in for, oops, in for this x. And I can find out what the value for the carbon dioxide is. Now, we've got the formula. And we want to estimate the year when the future levels will be double the pre-industrial level of 280. 
In other words, double that. When does it hit 560 parts per minute, parts per million? There's our, our model. And 560 is the carbon dioxide concentration we're interested in. We've got everything here except how many years was, will it be after 1990? And this is just an exponential equation. We can use logarithms, all of those things. Just as in the last one, divide both sides by 353. And then we'll take the natural logarithm of both sides. And why the natural logarithm? Well, because E is the base here, so it makes sense. You could use a common logarithm, but you'd have some problems. We could do that. If you really want to know that, stop by the office and I'll show you. But I'm not showing you how to do it in a more difficult manner. So here we've got it. the natural logarithm of 560 over 353 equals the natural logarithm of E to the 0.00609x. Well, of course, these are inverse operations. So this is what you get. Now all we need to do is divide both sides by 0 0.00609, like this, and solve for x. Uh, something's wrong here. Uh, let's see, this equals that and this X shouldn't be there. Okay, that fixes things. So our X, when we put this in the calculator, we'll get 75.8. Now, remember what you're working for. You're working for what year does the concentration hit double the pre-industrial strength. So 75.8 years after 1990. In other words, 2065, according to that model. Now, of course, we could get different models using different methods, but it looks as though the logarithm one is pretty strong, pretty reliable. Now, let's go a different route. Let's go some money. Since some of you will be taking business calculus, this might be handy. How long will it take the money in account, which accrues at 3% compounded continuously, to double? Here's the key. Now, what does the formula look like? We're talking about the amount. And this is the initial amount, also known as P. And we're going to E to the K T. Now, another way of putting this is the amount equals, we'll just put a P there because that's what we're familiar with using, E. Now, we don't know what K is yet, do we? Hmm. Well, there's K and there's T. Where do we go here? Okay, there's our formula. Now, the key here is doubling what this value is. When does it double? Well, putting the 2p in here with the p over here, we can just divide both sides by p. And all of a sudden, we've got something much simpler. Presto. And we've got a simple equation. We can convert that to a logarithmic equation, take the natural logarithm of both sides. Why natural logarithm? There's E, folks. Natural logarithm is what we want. So the natural logarithm of the left side, 2, equals, and these are inverse operations, natural logarithm of E. So what we have is natural logarithm of 2 equals 0.03t and Divide both sides by 0 0.03, and you've got T. Well, before your calculator sees that that is, put in the calculator, 
there you go this is how many years it's going to take for your money to double if you've got a three percent rate compounded continuously 23 years approximately if you want to make sure it's doubled you might make it the 24th year that's splitting hairs now we'll look at another one we're talking about the census bureau this time and we're talking about population and we'll be talking about years and we're talking about t being years after 2018 that's important to remember t after 2018 now we want to know it says by the middle of 2018 the population was 2.704 billion dollars so what is that well that's f of t that's the population we could have made it p of t for population so using that what will the world population be in 2025 so since t zero represents 2018 2018 to 2025 seven years so we'll put the seven years in for t easy job for the calculator right just put that number in and there's our seven for the seven years and here we go 8.012 billion people in 2025 how about going the other way suppose we want to know when it will hit 9 billion well, of course 9 billion is this the population so we'll put the 9 billion in the f of t and we'll solve our equation of course because we put e there we use natural logarithm so first of all divide both sides by 7.504 that's good and the right hand side looks good take the natural logarithm of that you'll end up with the exponent there you go well almost they haven't simplified it yet but these two are inverses so you'll end up with this on the right hand side so there you go now all you need to do is since you got a number times t just like 5t you divide by 5 well here it's 0 0.009386 t divide by that on both sides and here you've got sort of a messy one make sure that this fraction goes with the natural logarithm don't put the 0 0.00936 in here you'll be in big trouble so there we go that's the year the world population reaches 9 billion according to our model so in other words 19.4 years add the 19.4 to the 2018 and 2037 is when we expect the world population to hit 9 billion according to this model next let's go to radioactivity it's another exponential function we have 600 grams of it initially aha so this would be if we call it amount it'd be amount sub zero that's the initial amount three years later you have 300 grams using that information the basic formula and one piece of data here one ordered pair we can find out what the exponential equation is so we're going to put the given values in there this is where the 600 grams goes and we're going to then put the 
three years in there and the 300 grams there and we're off to the races and there's our basic one and for this particular one we get 300 three years later here's our initial value three is the number of years and k is the number we need to find to get the actual actual equation that works for this application. So dividing by the 600, of course, we've got that. You know the plan now, take the natural logarithm of both sides. On the left, we've got a constant. On the right, we've got inverse operations. So we've got this. Of course, what? This is algebra 1. Divide both sides by 3. And there's your k. Hit the calculator. There is our constant. Notice that this is a negative constant. That means it's a decay situation. And now we know what the, the basic model looks like. Here's the initial amount. And this is our K. This is the number of years. And this ends up being how much is left after T years. It keeps getting smaller and smaller. How much will be left after six years? Well, let's go back to our formula. Here's our formula. And here's the T value. We're going to let T equal six this time for the six years. And on the right hand side, everything is filled in. All we need to do is use the calculator. 150. And of course, there'll be 150 grams of that substance after six years. Now, it should make sense. The half-life we found was three years. So if we start with 600 grams, three years later, it's half of that. Three, 300 grams, another three years will be one half of that. And if we actually went one further, if we went another three years, there'll be 75 grams left and so on. That's how exponential decay works. Ex exponential growth works just in the opposite direction. Notice for decay, you have a negative K. For growth, you have a positive K. Now we're going to talk about carbon-14. That's used a lot in science for finding out how old something is. What's the age of some substance? Or in this case, we call them remains if we're talking about archaeology. We look for the amount of radiocarbon. In other words, how much carbon-14 is left. And here's the basic formula. Right here, y sub 0 means how much did we have to begin with? This small number, small negative number, is the constant k for this particular situation using carbon-14. t is the number of years. We already know that. We know it's not in minutes, hours, seconds. And this is our model. So, let's find the half-life of carbon-14. Well, it's not too bad because, remember, we're starting with y sub 0, whatever that is. Half-life means there's only half of it left, or one-half y sub 0. So here's what it looks like. Here's our basic equation that we're given. We only have one-half of it left. This is how much we started with. And notice we can divide both sides by y sub 0. And there we go. It's just 1 half equals e to that power with the t at the end. And we know how to solve that. Take the natural logarithm of both sides. These two are inverses. We'll be on our way. So we've got the natural logarithm of 1 half. You might want to use 0 
And on the right hand side, we've got a negative number in front of the T. Just divide both sides by that coefficient. And this is how you could set it up in the calculator. I think both of us would probably use the 0 0.5 instead of the 1 half, but it doesn't matter, of course. And that gives us 5,700. What does that mean? For carbon 14, this is the half life. The half life is about 5,700 years. So if you start with 100 grams of carbon 14, 5,700 years go by, and we'll only have 50 grams of it left. That's how it works. That's what a half-life means. Now, if we talk about charcoal, what's charcoal made of? Largely carbon, and part of it is carbon-14. And it says charcoal contained one-fourth the carbon-14 of a living sample. So what's the age of the charcoal? So we're going from carbon-14 that we began with, and we're going to find out, what is it? Estimate the age of the charcoal. In other words, how much time has gone by until you have one fourth of it left. There's our formula. Y equals one fourth Y zero because we have one fourth of that left at this particular time. So there's our equation. This is going to be one fourth Y sub zero. This is the original Y sub zero. And that's what it looks like. We can divide both sides by y sub 0. That will give us this equation. And again, the natural logarithm of both sides. These two are inverse operations. And we're off to the races. And that's how we're going to calculate t. Throw it in the calculator. And there's our t. 11,400 years later is when we'll have one-fourth of it left. So 11,400 years old is how old the charcoal is. Now here's one that I really enjoy. And you might find this interesting too. I've got some examples and I might actually make a video talking about Newton's law of cooling, because I think it's, excuse the pun, but I think it's sort of cool. Now, if you look in your book, you're going to see this equation, this formula. However, you might want to use this one. This is the same basic, basic thing. And it works the same way. T sub F is the final temperature of whatever we're interested in. Maybe it's the final temperature of the pizza, the pizza temperature after five minutes or 10 minutes, whatever. Initial temperature is how hot was it when you took it out of the oven? Temperature of the environment, what does that mean? I know what the pizza is. Well, the environment is where are you putting the pizza? Are you putting the pizza in a room that's 70 degrees, for example? That's the environment of the pizza after you take it out of the oven. Time will be in minutes, hours, seconds. It all depends on the situation. And K is that all-important constant. Now, since this is cooling, you're going to find that K is going to be negative because the temperature is going down. So it's a decay of temperature. So here's a nice example. I like one of these. You might like it too. So we've got a pot of coffee. It's at 100 degrees Celsius. You might recognize that if you've taken science. 
it's boiling the boiling point for water. We're going to put it in a room, a room that's 20 degrees. Remember, this is going to be the environmental temperature. The coffee is at 100 degrees initially. So this part will be T sub I. It's the initial temperature of our coffee. And what about the 60? The 60 is what it is after an hour. So this would be the final temperature. And putting all those together, we can find out how long it took to get the, the coffee from 100 degrees down to 60 degrees, or close to being able to be drunk. We need to find C. We need to find K. And when T is zero, that's often a good start. When T is zero, the initial temperature, that's T sub I, is 20 degrees. The temperature of the coffee at time T equals zero is 100. And also, you know, one minute, what is that? Oh, one hour. Here we go. We do have the time, one hour. So the temperature one hour later is 60 degrees. Put those into the function. So there's our given formula, their formula. You can use the one that I gave you too. You're ending up, or you're starting at 100 degrees. And, okay. So this is at the beginning. So your coffee is at 100. The environment is 20. C. What is C? Well, you're going to find out. Because time is 0. So negative 0 times k is just 0. e to the 0 is 1. So this is just C. So C is 80. Put that in your model now. Your model says the function of the temperature is 20 plus 80 times e to the minus kt. Now we know that t sub 0 is 20. We know c is 80. We can put those numbers in. There we go. And at that time, one hour later, one goes in for T. We can find K because everything else is known. So subtracting 20, we get into familiar territory. Then we'll divide by 80. Again, this should become more and more familiar. We're going to take the natural logarithm of both sides. These are inverse operations again. So on the right side, we'll end up with minus k, or the opposite of k. And that's equal to the natural logarithm of 1 half, or 0 0.5 if you wish. And there's your calculator coming in there. So there's our k. And the model looks like this. Find the temperature up after half an hour. We'll go back and pick up the model. All we need to do is put half hour in for T. Put one half in for T. There's our one half. We're going to find the temperature after one half. And here's our model. And it's 76.6 degrees Celsius. How about going down to 50? Well, we can use the same formula. Let f of t be 50. That's where it ends up. 
So 50 goes out here instead of the 60 we had before. This is our model. We want to find out what t is. This is our k with a minus sign because it's getting cooling. The temperature is going down. It's decaying in other words. Subtracting 20 and then we'll divide by 80 and we're back in familiar territory. Very familiar. Natural logarithm again. And again, these are inverse operations. So we've got negative 0.693t divided by that coefficient. And there is our t, about 1.415 hours or about an hour 25 minutes. How do you get to 25 minutes? Well, this is the one hour and this is part of an hour. So you take the 0.415 times 60 minutes in an hour and you get about 25 minutes. Well, that's it folks. You know a lot about logarithms and exponents. We've used the model and I hope you've learned a whole lot and enjoyed it too. Well, we'll see you next time and maybe we'll do some special ones with Newton's Law of Cooling. And we use the formula I gave you, which I think you'll like a little bit better than the one that they had in this section. Well, until then, you take care. Bye-bye.